Hello, Reading Bug Adventures fans. We'll be back next week with an all-new adventure, but today we have an extra special treat. I interviewed TV and film star and author Henry Winkler and Lynn Oliver a few weeks ago about their new series, Alien Superstar, and I can't wait to share it with you. Alien Superstar is a great read-aloud for ages 7 and up or a read-alone for ages 8 to 12. Enjoy this interview, and we'll see you in a few weeks for another big adventure. In the meantime, have you finished your holiday shopping? Now is a great time to visit ReadingBugBox.com to get that special someone a personalized subscription box. Or visit TheReadingBug.com for millions of books and gifts shipped right to your door. Hello, Reading Bug Adventures fans. We have a special bonus author interview for you today, and it's not just any old interview. It features two of the Reading Bug's favorite writers, and one of them is a TV and movie star you might recognize. Say hello to Lynn Oliver and Henry Winkler. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. So great to be with you. I am so excited to have you guys here today, and we can't wait to talk about your newest series, Alien Superstar. Um, the book was featured in our reading bug boxes last year, the first book in the series, and the second book uh, in this great middle grade series has just released, and it's called Lights, Camera, Danger. I really like that. I'm excited to read this one. So, But before we get into the book, I'd like to talk with both of you a little bit about each of your careers and where you started. So um, Henry, let's start with you. Many of us know so much about your film career, but can you tell us a little bit from the very beginning? Let's start with your childhood and your struggles there and how it informed you as an actor and later as an author. Well, the one thing that I always knew was that I wanted to be an actor. And I don't even know how it got into my mind or my body. That was the only thing I knew because it turns out I did not know math, science, spelling, Reading was almost impossible for me. I just had my dream. And uh, everybody said, oh, you're not going to be able to do that because your grades are so low, you're never going to achieve. And I couldn't believe that I had this strong sense of a dream and that people were telling me I wasn't going to be able to live it. So I never let it out of my brain. I am actually in the, the bottom 3% academically in America. But here it is. It didn't stop me from getting to this interview today in the year 2020. That's amazing. I'm I I'm I'm so impressed um, with with your career and and where you've gotten to and and becoming an author after all of this um, all of this film and television all the places we've seen you is such a neat transition. Can I just say that there are three things about that. One is if you know you have something in your mind and you think, oh gosh, I can't do that. I don't know how I'm going to do that. There is always a way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if I didn't meet Lynn Oliver over lunch, if I didn't meet my partner, I wouldn't be here. But Lynn has literally uh, been the other half of my circle in being able to uh, write. We've written 35 novels together. Yeah, that's the a lot. The other thing is do not give up. You know, uh, I always see myself as that toy, like the weeble wobble. Mm -hmm. You knock it over and it comes right back to center. Some people would say no to me and I would stand right back up and keep moving forward. That's such important advice. And I can really visualize that weeble wobble just popping right back up. <laughs> it sounds like you found a great writing partner in Lynn. So Lynn, let's hear from you. Tell me a little bit about how you and Henry met and how this partnership began. Well, it was a very lucky day. As Henry said, we met over lunch, which was a very bad lunch. It was kind of an old, it was kind of an old fish kind of lunch, if you know what I mean. It really was stinky fish. The stinky fish. But the conversation wasn't stinky at all. We had a wonderful conversation. And Henry told me about his childhood and how frustrated he was growing up that he didn't do well in school. And I thought, well, this would be a wonderful story to write for kids because so many kids struggle with with academics and with school. So we so we wrote our first series, which is called Hank Zipser, World's Best Underachiever. And that was in 2003, probably long before many of your, of your listeners mm -hmm. were even born. 
And we liked working together so much that we just never stopped. And here it is 17 years later and 35 books later. That is so neat. And you guys have written some very, you know, Hank in particular is a very important character. And I know that in the Here's Hank series, um, you guys used a very special font that's easier with kids with uh, with dys- dyslexia to conquer and be able to read. Um, so you've done some very important uh, work there for those kids. Um, can you talk a little bit about how, Henry, you... Do you know what, was, you know what is interesting yeah. uh, about that? We didn't know that we were writing an important series. What was important to us was to write comedy, Mm -hmm. was to make kids laugh. That Lynn always says, we want to be the book that is not um, assigned, that is not mandatory, that you don't have to read a chapter every night, but that you pick up because it makes you laugh. And then it turned out, because we wrote the truth about um this little boy eight years old hank zipser uh kids would write us and say how did you know me so well that's exactly right that's a i and same thing with alien superstar i think you guys have really built a character that uh that people can relate to um and the kids reading it uh you know whether they're reluctant readers or they're a high or a lower level reading they're it's accessible to all of them and can you tell us a little bit about um why it's important that these books are accessible to everyone well our first purpose always is to is to explore the adventure and the wonder and the pleasure of reading and i think that sometimes that can get lost in the in the emphasis on doing well and on academics. So we tell stories that are funny and that are full of joy with characters that you love and you want to be around. So that's always our first purpose. And with Alien Superstar, we added over that over to that purpose a really fun plot. It's about a kid who comes from an alien planet and his life here on Earth. And that's always really fun to read about. Lots, lots of jokes, lots of Uh, observations about our culture and what it's like to be a kid in America today. So uh, we, we combine a really fun premise with lots of laughs and lots of adventure. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. the other thing too, we, we, I, when I was younger, I always thought that, and, and this is true, that real aliens would land somewhere where I was. They would land in my vicinity. And I have no idea how I even came up with that thought and that they would be friendly. So I really love um, that the area, the area of an alien. And number two, we know that kids love, oh, you know, being a star and limousines and red carpets and parties and, and paparazzi. And Lynn has written hours and hours of television and ran uh, Harry and the Hendersons and has written movies, uh, both for television and the big screen. I've been on television and in the movies Mm -hmm. and it, we knew the world. So we took the two worlds and combined them and we put in the good, the bad and the ugly of being in show business. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, I and I love you know drawing on experiences that you know, um, and then and then adding something like like aliens to it. <laughs> you know, that's what? right. It's called it. Well, I was just saying that the general form is called a stranger in a strange land. Yes. So you take an alien from another planet and you put him in one of the strangest places here on Earth, which is the back lot of Universal Studios, where uh-huh. all the Films and television are made and weird characters are walking around and strange things happen and people eat cotton candy the size of a mountain. And suddenly you have a stranger in a strange land and it's really fun to read about. Yeah. So, Lynn, can you take us a little further into the character of Buddy? Just tell us a little bit about um, how you wove all these specific themes, like in accepting differences in people and the challenge of fitting in. How did you weave all that into Buddy and, and what is what is Buddy like? Well, Buddy Berger is an alien. He comes from a red dwarf planet many, many, many galaxies away. And on that planet, there is a terrible government, a repressive leader. And that leader has said when people are 13, that he they turn off, they deactivate their sensory enhancer, 
which is a, a part of their body that allows them to experience all the pleasures of sight and sound and taste and touch. And the buddy doesn't want that to happen to him. So his grandmother, Grandma Wrinkle, designs a spaceship for him and sends him to Earth to avoid the fate of having his sensory enhancer deactivated. And he lands on the only address that they know in the whole uh, universe, which is Universal City Tours back lot. And when his rocket ship lands there, suddenly Buddy fits right in because everybody there is a character dressed as someone. Homer Simpson is walking around and Frankenstein is walking around. So a, a kid alien with a sensory enhancer on his back looks entirely normal. So he gets a job on a situation comedy playing an alien. And so the books, there there will be three in the series. All the books are about his life here on Earth as a as a television star, as a major television star, the way Henry is. With a secret. You know, um, oh, that's part of the theme is what happens if people find out who I really am, will they still like me? And we find that the, the truth is, yes, they will. And also, you know what? I just realized this not too long ago, that we have written 35 books together. And all the characters are characters that seem to be outsiders. They seem to be on the other side of the glass, looking in, wanting to get into the party and not knowing exactly how. And there's always somebody in the book that helps them open the door. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a, it's a, it's a great series and I'm, I'm having so much fun. I have, I'm halfway through the second book. I read some this morning and um, I actually would like to hear a little bit more. So um, Henry, would you be willing to read a little bit for us? Sure. So in the second book uh, now, you know, he escaped from his planet and the planet's government is very, very um, angry. You cannot escape, and they certainly can't let somebody leave because then everybody is going to get that idea. <laughs> so they send Citizen Cruel, one of the worst of the squadron, down to Earth in her spaceship in order to kidnap Buddy and bring him back. Now, Buddy, because he comes from another planet, he needs to submerge in water for at least an hour a day. But on this morning, he didn't do it, and he's getting very weak. So his friend, who works at Universal, Luis, puts him over his shoulder, runs him over to Jurassic Park Lake, and throws him in. And he sinks to the bottom. But he's got three lungs, so he can hold his breath under the water. Well, while he's sitting there, before I could swim away, a large brontosaurus head with its mouth open splashed through the surface of the lake, heading directly for me. There was no doubt that that head belonged to the three-clawed foot that was staring me right in the face. Oh my goodness, all of a sudden it opened its mouth and lifted me out of the water. It lifted me like I was a feather. From the corner of my eye, I could see Luis standing on the side of the lake, frantically waving his hands above his head. Help, I yelled at him. I'm being eaten. Hey, don't worry about it, dude. Brontosauruses are plant eaters. Besides, he's not real. Well, he's real enough for me to be in his mouth. All of a sudden, he started to shake me around like a rattle, and I could feel the guacamole in my stomach starting to slosh. And you know you've got a problem when you hear guacamole slosh. <laughs> <laughs> so I really, uh, that's one of my favorite readings I've ever, do, do you think, Henry, that there's a, uh, is there any audio available for this or would you be reading an audio book ever? There is, you know, uh, <gasps> the most difficult part of my entire career is reading books on tape or books on CD. I read the first one out and I just read the second one on CD about three weeks ago. So that will be available as soon as they uh, uh, edit it and get it into a package. 
Excellent. So we should mention too, so that will be available on Libro.fm slash The Reading Bug, um, which is great. It's a great independent site for everyone to get their audiobooks. Oh, wow. um, oh I can't wait for that. I'm glad I asked. So um, do you have uh, any, Hank Zipser became a TV series. Do you guys have any plans for uh, Alien Superstar to move on to TV or film? Lenny? Oh. Well, do we have we have plans for it? The question is, does the world have plans for it? Of course, we think, we think it would make a great either feature film or mm-hmm. television series. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the the life of an alien who is a, a star and is encountering all the difficulties and all the pleasures of being a big star. We think is something that would appeal to kids, and it's very cinematic, meaning there would be you can visualize. Lots of very funny scenes. So we uh, we were waiting to, until after the second book came out to to start those conversations. And there's one more book in the series uh, in which the whole drama of Buddy coming to Earth is resolved. Will he stay on Earth and be a star? Will he return to his home planet? Will he conquer the evil forces that exist on his planet? Uh, will he get a girlfriend? Will he learn to love tacos? All of those questions are will be answered in book three. Excellent. I love it. Yeah, that's exciting. You know, and the way you guys write, um, you know, not every author writes books that uh, that convert easily um, to television and film. And because of the, the cinematic way you guys are writing, um, I think it really lends itself to it. So it's exciting to to have all these different mediums that you can well, You use. know, Hank Zipser, the 18 Hank Zipsers, uh, yeah. be- a television series in, uh, for the BBC. Yes. And two years ago, uh, it wa- it won the award for the best international kids drama um, uh, at the Cannes Film Festival for television. Yeah, yeah, it's a great series. I've I've loved that series, and uh, yeah, so I'd be excited to see this one move on too. That's that's really neat. After uh, Alien Superstar, do you guys have plans for anything else yet, or are you just are you just finishing up the series first? Well, we actually have uh, another series in the work. It, well, actually, it's probably a single book, but it's composed of several stories. And that's a chapter book for our younger readers, because we had such a great time writing Here's Hank, which is a, a younger version of the Hank Zipser books, that we came up with another character. And that uh, we can't say what it is yet, mm-hmm. but it's an animal, not a person. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a female animal. And uh, she solves mysteries. Excellent. And it also has to do with the environment. We think it's going to be very funny and really a character that's going to live on for a long time. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. I think, you know, the, that early reader um, area is always an area that we can include more books in. I think the kids go through the books so fast in that, you know, six, seven and eight year old age range. So we'd love to see some more and especially some more mysteries. Mysteries are so fun. Yeah, they, they teach all kinds of thinking skills, mm-hmm. but also they, they sort of keep you guessing about what will happen in the end. We're really excited about that because we're very invested in the idea of kids learning to read, mm-hmm. but also learning to read and thinking it's great fun at the same time. Yeah. So yeah. that will, so that's, that, that informs all of the choices we make about what we decide to write next. Mm-hmm. Can I share one detail or not yet? Well, let's ask our listeners. Can you take a, can you take a secrecy vow? Everybody, think- everybody listening, raise your right hand and say, "I promise to keep this a secret." <laughs> I think they promise. <laughs> okay, Henry, go ahead. So there is one character in our new book which I love, and uh, it, he is a catfish who, um, of course, he has got bad eyesight. And one day, a human being walks by the pond that he lives in and leans over to look at his reflection and, the, and this human being's eyeglasses fall into the water and kind of float down to the bottom right on top of the catfish's head. And he looks up, the catfish looks up and goes, oh my goodness, I had no idea everything looked so good. I love it. Oh, I can't wait for this one for our Reading Book Box subscribers. That's going to be a little ways off, probably. How long does it take you actually to write one of these books? 
Well, it takes about a year for the whole process to happen. That's writing and illustrating and publishing and printing and getting it out. So I think uh, in about a year, a year and a half from now, you can look forward to that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Henry Henry kind of spilled even more of the beans than he thought, because now you know that it takes place in a pond. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the main characters is a catfish. So maybe you guys can guess who the who the main character is, who lives in a pond and has feathers and would be a very good detective. Ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. We can have kids write their own stories until this one comes out and see how yes. correct they were. Yes, that would be great. Yeah. Oh, oh, that is so neat. Well, I'm excited for that one. Speaking of questions kids like to ask, this is my favorite part of the interview where I ask rapid fire reading bug questions. So let's start with Henry. Okay. What is your favorite movie you've been in? My fa oh, uh, a movie called Night Shift directed by my friend Ron Howard. When I did a show called Happy Days, I played Fonzie and he played Richie. And in the movie Night Shift, he said, you know, he directed it. Ron Howard directed it. And he said, you can play either role. And I said, well, I've just played a kind of showy character, the Fonz. I'm going to play Richie in the movie. Interesting. I Now I need to go back and watch this again. <laughs> we just watched you the other night in uh, in Waterboy, as a matter of fact. That was oh, so I fun. Love well, I, I love Adam Sandler. I, I did five yeah, of his movies. Yeah, he's great. You, you were so much fun in that one. I'd forgotten about it. We just went back again. So it's it's neat to hear what, you know, what your favorite experiences were. And um, what, um, so as far as reading goes, so I know you've mentioned that your whole life reading has been a struggle for you. Um, do you do you read for fun at home? And if you do, what um, what genres do you like? You know what? I My mind really does well with thrillers. I like an author by the name of Daniel Silva. And I have been able to read every book that he wrote. Um, but it, reading is still very difficult for me. You know, you have a learning challenge. It does not go away. What you do is you learn to negotiate it. Mm -hmm. You learn to live with it. You learn to make it your friend. But you never get rid of it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And I think it's so important for kids too. I mean, I always read on the slower side. Um, and I think it's important for kids to just keep trying, right? I think it's just a, and absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, they have got our books are read. You can read, um, you know, just a few pages at a time. Um, but hopefully we've made them so exciting that it will keep moving you forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then some easy, really fun questions. What's your favorite food? Mine? Yeah. Okay. Uh, a cheeseburger on 57th Street in New York City uh, uh, called uh, the Burger Joint. Yeah. Uh, their cheeseburger is my favorite cheeseburger in America. Oh, excellent. And your favorite color? Green. The gr it's, the, it's the color of life. Um, my wallet is green. Uh, I, I have green shoes. Um, I, I really love the color green. Excellent. And of course, our trick question, what is your favorite bug? The reading green bug. bug. And then followed by the ladybug. <laughs> yes. Okay. Lynn, what is your favorite children's book? My favorite children's book of all time is Charlotte's Web. And I read mm -hmm. it every year and I cry the same amount every time at the last page. Oh, I love Charlotte's Web. I read that many times and once with my mom out loud and I never yes. forgot that. I've read it out loud too. Once I drove up the coast of California and we read it out loud. The My partner and I read it out loud. We kept changing back and forth. Oh. We cried all the way up to San Francisco. Oh, oh that's so nice. <laughs> What's your uh, favorite TV show you've written for? Oh, gosh. I, you know, I loved writing. I wrote Wayside School based on the Lewis Sacker books yes. as a television show. And I really loved writing for that because it was so strange. It's nice mm -hmm. to write things that don't particularly have to make sense. <laughs> what's your favorite food? <gasps> oh, tuna melts. And what's your favorite color? Pink. Oh, Actually, pink, a dusty rose is my favorite oh, color. I like it. It's a shade of pink. Yep. 
I thank you guys so much for being here today. And um, we're so excited with this series and we can't wait to get into our reading bug glasses this fall. And um, the Alien Superstar series is available at thereadingbug.com or your local independent bookstore. And if you're a Reading Bug Box subscriber and you'd like to have book one or two in your subscription box coming up, you can request that book in a future box. Henry and Lynn, it was so much of a pleasure talking with you guys today. The Reading Bug and I cannot wait to get on to finishing book two in the Alien Superstar series. Lights, camera, danger. Anything else you guys want to add? I would just like to say that we love you. We love your readers and we love your store and we love your subscription boxes. Thank you. We think you're doing a great job serving the community of kids who love to Thank read. you so much. And actually, you know, one last question there then. Henry, too, um, if you both want to answer this, that's great. What would be your advice to these kids out there that um, anyone who wants to be a writer or an actor or anything in their future, what kind of advice would you give them right now? Okay. The first thing I would do is I would, I would, you could write as a kid uh, and write anything that comes to your mind. Do not be embarrassed. Just write anything and everything. Uh, And the number two about being an actor, I would not become a professional actor as a kid. Maybe you don't want to hear that, but I would just be a kid and let all that experience add to when you're an actor later on in life. Yeah. Lynn, anything else? I agree with that. And I think if you want to be a writer, there's nothing that stops you from writing at any age. All you need is a computer screen or a pencil or a crayon or a marker or a Sharpie. And, And as Henry said, Don't be afraid to use your imagination. Don't be afraid to have strange and interesting thoughts that are unique only to you and write them all down. Every little word that you write is great practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. Thank you so much, Henry and Lynn. Again, Alien Superstar Series is available at thereadingbug.com or your local independent bookstore. Book number two is coming out right now. It's called Lights, Camera, Danger, and we can't wait to finish it up. Thanks so much, you guys. Thanks. It was great talking to you. Bye. Thanks for listening to our special author interview. We'll see you next week on our Reading Bug Adventure. But in the meantime, have you finished your holiday shopping? Now is a great time to visit readingbugbox.com to get that special someone a personalized subscription box. Or visit thereadingbug.com for millions of books and gifts shipped right to your door. Can't decide? Get an e-gift card sent directly to your recipient. See you soon.